let's figure out the pH of pure water. There you go. Okay, yeah. very good. All right, that might seem straightforward, but that's important. Let's actually see technically what that really comes from. What is the chemical reaction that's generating that pH of 7? Um, the O2, no, I'm sorry. The H the alpha, the H2O. Wait, now remember, there's no hydrochloric acid here. This is a whole new no, example so with pure just, water. Oh. Isn't the reaction with, between H, H, H2 and then O2? O2? That actually is a different reaction that makes water. So the reaction that we're looking at here now is <clears throat> So water is both a strong acid and a strong base. It's called what? Uh, amphoteric which shows they can both donate and receive a proton. So one of the waters here is donating a proton to the other water. So one of the waters turns into hydronium and one turns into hydroxide. Okay, um, uh, amphoteric is weak, both a weak acid and a weak base? Something that's amphoteric is something that can act as both an acid and a base. Something that's amphoteric can act as both an acid and a base. And again, sometimes people kind of abbreviate this reaction. Sometimes people say that the water is just dissociating into protons and hydroxides. But again, that's a little less realistic because the protons are not really by themselves. The protons have really been donated to another water, like this reaction. So we can stick with this. This is called water autoionization. This is the water autoionization reaction because the water is ionizing itself. Um, OK, now if we start with zero concentrations, is this reaction going to go to equilibrium or to completion? That'll go to um, equilibrium. Because water is a weak acid and a weak base. So what should I write down as the change here? Well, when we have a reaction that goes to equilibrium, we have to use X for the change, because we don't know what the change is going to be. We know each of these is going to increase by X. I'm not going to bother saying how the water concentration changes, because we don't care about that. So the final concentrations will be X and X. Now we know that in equilibrium, Q equals K. The equilibrium constant for this reaction is the hydronium times the hydroxide concentration. Water doesn't appear because it's a pure liquid, so those don't appear in the, uh, in the uh, reaction quotient. Now there's a special name for the equilibrium constant for this reaction. This is a concept you guys probably have to know for the class. Do you guys know what the name or the symbol is for the K for a water auto-ionization? KW. That's right. That's the KW. What is the KW? It's just the equilibrium constant for this reaction. 10 to the negative 14. That's right. So that's our next step to plug in 10 to the negative 14. So x squared equals 10 to the negative 14. So x equals 10 to the negative 7. So then the pH would be the negative log. Now, x here is the hydronium concentration. So the hydronium concentration here is negative log of 10 to the negative 7, which is negative negative 7, OK, which is 7. All right, that's perfectly fine just to know from memory that a neutral solution has a pH of 7. But the important thing is that this is a pattern we're going to use on lots of acid and base problems. So it's good to see this pattern. So the point is, even pure water can donate some protons. Um, even pure water can donate some protons, and here's how we work that out. So now we've seen the two basic patterns. Previously, we, we did an example with a strong acid. That went to completion, so we didn't need any equilibrium expressions. Here we have a weak acid, so we need to use X and an equilibrium expression. Those are the two basic types of cases you'd be dealing with. Well, which case on the handout have we dealt with now? Um, um, no acid or base. Yeah, the very first um, one, pure water, no acid or base. You guys already knew that the pH would be 7, but it's good to see how to work that out technically. So you should make a note on the handout that this is the place in your notes where we work through how to do that. Now we understand what the point of the KW is, um, which is a concept that you're expected to be familiar with from the class.